Hey there, welcome to another Curtis Stage video tutorial. Today's tutorial is in Photoshop and we're going to be creating a Jerry Yulsman style surreal photo uh, montage. And so it's going to look something like this. Uh, and before we create something like this in Photoshop, using mostly masks, multiple layers, what I want to do is I want to just talk a little bit about Jerry Yulsman so we can kind of see uh, what we're going for here. Um, so he, of course, American photographer, still still doing work. Uh, these images that he is famous for, he did them all on film in the dark room, not using Photoshop. So always interesting. He's, he's been doing this since the 60s and really created some amazing images. And, you know, in the world of photography, he actually wasn't considered a photographer at first because he was manipulating images and photo montage was, you know, people were on the fence about whether it was an art, you know, true art form or not. It actually took photography a little bit of time to become called an art form. And then when you mix photo montage in it, you know, true photographers that, you know, straight up photography were kind of considering this not, you know, a realistic art form. But... He's carrying on traditions of surrealism in his work. And as you can see, you know, these images, uh, you know, evoke some uh, kind of magical uh, illusion in the world. Uh, they may have some spiritualism kind of happening. Whatever his content is, whether you like it or not, it's pretty cool looking. And, you know, these images are, again, if you know, created on film in the dark room, do it using multiple exposures and then techniques in the dark room to blend, seamlessly blend, or fairly seamlessly blend the images together. Now in Photoshop, we can do this really easily. So we're gonna do that. Now, if you're in my class at Los Angeles Mission College, your surrealist project that you're doing for us in class is gonna be life in Southern California as the theme. So it's surrealism, which is dreamlike imagery, the unconscious, we're kind of uncovering those things uh, through life in Southern California. So while Jerry Yulsman, his themes are not Southern California, the techniques that we're gonna use today can help you create your Surrealist project for my class. If you're not at Los Angeles Mission College, then you're creating a Jerry Yulsman style photo montage and let's get started on that. So I've downloaded a bunch of images. It's important to have those images ready to go. You'll see again, I've already created one version of this. Uh, so something like that, using some of the imagery that Yulsman has used over the years in his work uh, as an inspiration. And so, you know, I have some images in here that are available to you uh, for download in YouTube. And if you're in my LA Mission College class, they're available in Canvas. So I've got some you know, some stock images here. This is kind of a stock image that we're gonna use. This is an image that I shot, shot in Central Park as the main background. We've got sand dunes that I shot out in Colorado. And then we've got a stock image hand and kind of stock image ripples from water. So we're gonna be creating uh, this photo montage using putting together all of those images. So one, two, three, four, five images together to create this. All right, so let's open up Photoshop. Now, when we get started in Photoshop, we wanna make sure that we have our sizing right. So I'm gonna to go to Create New, and you'll look over here on the right-hand size side here, and you'll see that we have possibly of using pixels, but I wanna do it in inches. We're not printing this out, but I want everybody's to be uniform, especially if you're doing this in my class. So, it, we're going to pick either eight by 10 or 10 by eight. So I'm gonna pick 10 inches wide by eight inches high. And my resolution for print would be between 200 and 300. Even though we're not gonna print these, we're just gonna show them digitally. Let's have it at a high quality. So if you did wanna print these out, they would look really good. Um, everything else is fine here, RGB colors fine, we'll get We'll talk more about our color mode later this semester in the class. 8-bit uh, is fine. You, you see that we have a possibility of increasing this, but we're going to leave it at 8-bit. And our color profile that we're going to use is usually you have a working profile of your computer monitor. Uh, I personally like to use Adobe RGB 1998 
but we're gonna leave it at our working RGB. Whatever this says right here for the color profile, just leave it for now. But I just want you to know that when I'm working in Photoshop with photography especially, I usually like to use Adobe RGB. This matches my camera. All right, so I'm gonna leave it for my, what's synced to my monitor, square pixels, yes, and click Create. So we have a blank white canvas here. This is what we wanna get started with. Before I do anything, I wanna save this into a folder, preferably the same folder that I have all of my resource images. So I'm gonna to go to File, Save As, and I'm gonna give this a title. So maybe I would put my last name and uh, surrealism if this was actually gonna be for my project. Now again, you're not turning this in. If you're in class with me, you're not turning this in as your project. This is just the demo. So we're gonna title it demo here. Uh, so it'd be the surrealism demo assignment. You'll be turning in an actual surrealism that you work on to me. So I'm gonna save it in my same folder that has all the images that I'm gonna use. You'll notice the format. We want it to say Photoshop here. We wanna have all those Photoshop layers. This is our master document. We do not wanna have a compressed image file format for this. We wanna just pick Photoshop. So I'm gonna click save. And there we go. You can see right on the tab up here that it is saved and we're good to go there. Now I'm gonna bring in the first image. Now there's a couple ways to do this. I could have my image and I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna be the Central Park Theater one. Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. One way would be to just drag this right from my folder on my computer into Photoshop. That's one way to do it, right? Just take it and drag it right in there. If I do that, it's gonna be called a smart object. Now, this is fine, Smart Object is, is okay, and we'll talk about this in later demos, but for our purposes, we do not wanna have Smart Objects because we're gonna be editing these images uh, using masks, and while we could do that with a Smart Object, I want you to get in the habit early on here because you don't know exactly what a Smart Object is. We wanna get in the habit of converting this to a rasterized image of bitmap. So, I'm gonna size this first. It's got this blue box with this blue X in front of it. That's telling me that it is a smart object. I'm gonna size it and get it kind of, so it fills up my frame here. Let's see, a little smaller. I don't want any white in other words. So let me kind of size that and get it there, something like that. So pretty good. I could even you know, move it to, from one side or whatever. I'm gonna put my water over here. I'm gonna put the uh, person right there. So you can kind of, position this however you want it, just as long as there's no white showing. Okay, so something like this and click check. Now you'll see this symbol right down here in the bottom right corner. This is indicating that it is a smart object. Now again, just as a brief little primer here, what a smart object, what a smart object is gonna do is it's, it's basically, a if we were gonna use Illustrator essentially, let's say I was doing a logo for a project and I did that logo in Illustrator and then I, wanted to bring it into a layout that I created in Photoshop, I could bring that in as a smart object and if I wanted to edit that layer, uh, that logo, let's say my client wanted me to change a color in the logo, well, those, I, you know, it's a working Illustrator file so I could double click the layer of the smart object and it would open up Illustrator and then I could edit it and when I save it, it would make those changes back in Photoshop. Well, we don't want any of that to happen with any of these images. The, we don't need this. So it's, in other words, it's like the images are married to each other and whatever change you make is gonna change the whole document. So I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna go up to layer and I'm gonna go to rasterize. I'm gonna say all layers. So that's one way to change it to a rasterized image. Now you won't see that symbol there. Okay, so that's my first background image. That looks good, that's ready to go. The next one I wanna bring in is the person. So I'm gonna to go to the sand dunes photo and I could open her up. This is another way to open up images. We don't have the smart object and I can edit it a little bit better. So I'm gonna drag this to my Photoshop icon on, on the Mac and let go. And now I have both of these tabs open right? This is a JPEG, but I'm going to edit this or take a part of this. I don't want the whole image. So I'm going to expand this just a little bit bigger so we can see this. Okay, so I'm going to do a loose selection around the person. So I'm going to go to the rectangular marquee tool and I'm just going to take a chunk here, right? So I'm going to make a marching ant selection. Then I'm going to go to my move tool. I'm going to view these two side by side. So I'm going to go to window, 
range, two up vertical. And let me just move her over here. Then I'm gonna take her, I'm gonna hover my mouse right over the center, inside here, not here. You can see my mouse change. Look at this. Look at the symbol that next to the move tool. See how it changes right there? It thinks that I wanna cut this, which I do. I wanna cut this out and put it over here. It's not gonna cut it out actually. Watch, it's gonna look like I'm cutting it out, but all I have to do is keep dragging it. And when I let go over here, it brings her over here and leaves this image intact. Now I'm gonna minimize this or get rid of it. I don't need it open. Now she's not the right size or anything like that. And I'm gonna mask this off here once I'm in this image. So I'm going to uh, do a Command T, which is Transform or Control T on a, on a PC, grab a corner, size her down to a size that I think works in this image. I'm going to move her over somewhere in here compositionally. I'm really looking at the composition. I don't want her to be too big in the space, although I could, you know, it just really depends. So something like this is good because I'm going to have that hand coming out of the door and water ripples over here. So something like that's pretty good. So I want to hit the check mark. So she's in the foreground. If I had her really small, that would look kind of weird, but it's surreal, so you could do it. I could have her kind of smaller back here. That could be interesting. So play around with size, and it's up to you on that. I don't want to have her the same size as the door, so that would be compositionally kind of a little awkward. So I want either bigger than the door or smaller than the door. So I'm going to have her a little bit bigger than the doors. If I put her up here, yes, she's indeed bigger, but she's back in space here a little bit, so something like this compositionally, something like that. I'm gonna hit the check mark. Now I wanna create a mask around her. I'm gonna zoom in and on this layer, so here's the person layer, I'm gonna create a mask. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the layers palette, click the mask button. You can see that the mask, which is all white, which means this is revealing everything that's to the left here and showing what's below. Well, I wanna mask out this space around, okay? so. I could go in here and start painting out and uh, that would be fine. So I could do it by hand or even better yet, before clicking this mask, I'm gonna actually delete the mask. Watch how you delete it. I'm just gonna drag it to the trash can and say, delete the mask. Before creating the mask, I'm gonna make a selection around her and then create the mask out of that selection. Then I can fine tune edit that. So I'm gonna go to my magnetic lasso tool. I'm gonna start somewhere on her arm and just kind of go around. Now you wanna get as closely as you can and you can zoom in, Command or Control Plus. If you mess up and uh, it's out of, you know, you just hit delete, delete, delete and go back and kinda of hit it again. Make sure you're on her layer, of course. If you're not on her layer, this won't work really well. Use your space bar to move around in the image. So let me get around her hat. Get it as closely as I can here, right? Get it as, We can always fix things because it's a mask. If I don't get it perfect, I can always go back and get those little parts that I'm missing, like the edge of that hat or whatever. So it doesn't have to be exactly perfect on this selection. Just get it as close as you can get it, right? If you go like that, it's kind of okay. I'll leave that there and show you how I to edit that. So I'm gonna go around. Her knuckles getting cut off. Looks like she has something in her hand here. I forget what it was. I took this picture a while ago. I'm gonna go down here. I'm using my space bar and I'm scrolling through the image here to be able to move down, stay zoomed in and move down. I'm gonna not include the shadow because we're gonna create our own shadow actually. So I'm gonna not include this shadow here. So I'm gonna try to get around her leg here and not include that. And I'm clicking every once in a while to make sure, like when I go around a corner like down here, I'm gonna, um, let me delete back. When I went, When I hit this spot right here, I wanted to force Photoshop to that part of her ankle. So I was clicking with my mouse to make that happen. So I'm gonna go up. The magnetic lasso tool is pretty good if you have a high contrast. So high contrast, right, is a relationship between light and dark and her leg right here contrasted with that sand. It's high contrast. Down in that shadow, it was low contrast. Still high contrast here. Easy for this tool to get this. Still high contrast around. And the higher resolution your image is, the better this is gonna be. I'm gonna meet all the way up with the start. I'll get this part here in a minute um, by doing this. So I can now hold, I want to delete this part of the uh, space here. 
And so I'm gonna hold down Option or Alt on my keyboard and go up here, close as you can, and get that space out of there. So this is not gonna be, oops, hit Delete. So you see there's a little minus sign. I don't have to have my hand held down on it once I started drawing, once I started making this selection. So now that's not gonna be included either. Okay, so now that I've got that selection, I'm going to go and click the mask. Now you can see it's, look at that, that looks pretty good, right? And of course, I can zoom in because it is a mask and it's non-destructive editing, and I can go in and fine tune edit. So check this out, I can zoom all the way into that part of that arm. I'll turn the background off just so I can see it. Now I can get my paintbrush and I'll get a tool, I'll get a um, brush tip uh, in my general brushes that's a hard round and I'm gonna bring this size down a little bit right there and close that up. Still too big, so I'm gonna use my keyboard brackets and get that smaller. And I'm gonna make sure black is my foreground on my paintbrush. I can switch the colors right here. Black and white is the only thing you can use on a mask or gray. So I wanna use black. And now when I paint here, it feels like I'm erasing, but I'm not, right? I'm not destroying any pixels. This is non-destructive editing. So if I go around here, I don't know what's going on with your hand there, but I'll just shave that off. Let's see if there's any other parts. That looks all good. It's close enough. Um, up in here, there was a part of her hat that was missing. So I can add that back in by uh, switching this foreground color to white or clicking X on my keyboard. X, X, X. Puts it back. Now I'm going to go up here and make my brush a little smaller and I can go around the rim of that hat. I'm kind of feeling my way around this. I something like that and just get that hat it's a little bit more defined if it's got a little edge on there that's kind of cool it's fine no one's going to know there was sand there go around that okay oops use my space bar to move around i'm going to clean this dark part off this right here go back to uh, black black hides everything to the left and reveals down below now I turn that background off I turn the eyeball off right here just because it was gonna be hard to see that right so turning that eyeball off just helps me see this just a little bit better and I can go in and fine-tune edit this so you can see you want to for your projects that you're turning in you want your Photoshop to be high level here so here I am around this hair uh, on her shoulder I'm gonna get this part right here I'm gonna round off her shoulder a little bit. It looks a little square. This is not the highest resolution image, so we're seeing the bitmap pixels. Um, it's fine for our project. You wanna download the highest quality images you can, but for our purposes for this demo, it's fine. So I'm command minus, and I'm zoomed way in. So command minus, that's good. Turn my eyeball back on, and now I've got her there. Now, you know, the key with surrealism oftentimes is having the right angle for an image and having the right light for an image. So this light is pretty good. Uh, the light's behind her and above, and in this space that she's in, uh, it's hard to tell where the light's coming from, but certainly it's, it's coming from behind me as the photographer. So I wanna create a shadow now. So I'm gonna show you a cool way to create a shadow off her, and we're gonna force the issue of her being in this space. Because with no shadow underneath her, it looks like she's just floating in the space, which could be okay in surrealism, but let's make it look a little real, more realistic. I'm gonna go down to the effects panel down here. So I'm gonna click effects, and I'm gonna go down to drop shadow. It's gonna open up a, uh, it's gonna open up the layer styles panel, drop shadow. Now, uh, I can play around with which direction the shadow is going. Now, if the sun was behind her, the shadow would be going off this way in like a, you know, kind of a 50, negative 50, negative 60, something, negative 40, whatever, something like that, right? I want that distance to be away from her a little bit. So I'm going to pull this. So there it is. Drop shadow doesn't make sense, but I'm going to pull this distance away. Now you're saying, Curtis, well, it's floating up on the wall like that. I need to attach it down here. We're going to do that in a sec. The spread you can see you could do a hard shadow soft shadow and we can fool around with that um, you know so maybe spread size you can kind of i want it still to be legible that's her a little bit so maybe that you just have to fool around so it still feels like there's a hat uh shadow i don't want it to be hard but i don't want it to be super soft so something like that maybe and then distance yeah i'm just pulling it away here so i can see it so that's good so something like this i'm going to click ok now here's the trick you can see on your layers panel, there's the effect right there. 
Now I'm going to control click right where it says drop shadow. I'm going to control click there and I'm going to say create layer. So I'm creating a layer out of this effect. Not all effects do it, but a drop shadow does. Check it out. There it is. Now I can click on this layer and I can go to command T and I could rotate this. This is pretty cool. And take this down here and put it down where it would be. Maybe rotate it a little more. And while I'm here, you know, I might go up to the warp tool up on my options bar, click that and, and just kind of stretch this out a little bit so I can go up and grab it. And cause you know, the shadow wouldn't be totally even. It would kind of look like it was going up this wall a little bit it would kind of change directions. I don't want it to be that crazy, but it would, I'm going to pull this area down here and pull this little guy down here and it's a little curved. Um, so I can kind of do something like that, that, I guess. Still see it's a hat. And a little bit of warping is kind of cool. It would actually probably go flat across this wall and then straight up. So I'd probably have to cut this in half. So let me do that. Watch this. I'm going to click my check mark and go, okay, that looks cool, but that's not how a shadow would actually work. So check this out. I'm on the layer. I'm going to go over again to my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to zoom in on this. I want to try to get it as as good as I can get it. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna start at the bottom here and I'm only on the shadow layer. So this is gonna, I'm gonna go across the bottom of the wall and go up. It's pretty cool. It's close enough right there. Um, I could nudge it up with my arrow keys on my keyboard, right? So there we go. I'm gonna cut this and put it on its own layer so it's separate. So watch how I do that. I'm gonna go to layer, new, via, cut. Okay, now the top shadow is on its own layer and now I can command T that and now I can turn that a little bit right so it looks like it's this and I can even make it a little bigger to match up because I want that angle to turn and right? this is kind of how the shadow work now look I don't want that space there so I'm pulling it down in here this is cool and I'm going to turn this that's a little bit better right and then I could even take this bottom one now the, where it's turning and overlapping, it's creating this kind of overlap here. So I can cut that off. So now I'm going to click over here on the eraser, right? Eraser tool. I'm going to go over to my brush here. It's one time that I'll use a brush, uh, eraser brush and do destructive editing. Take the hardness all the way down. So I can pick a soft round here, whatever. It's fine. Close that. Close that up. And now when I, and make sure you're on that top part of the shadow. And now I can kind of just delete that part. I don't want to go up into the wall because look what happens. Then I'm right. So command Z and undo so I can zoom in and just get that. I don't need to mask this off unless you feel like you do. Then I can go here and actually where that crease is in the wall being a little darker of the overlap is kind of good. So that looks nice. That looks more realistic, right? That it, the shadow is bending to go up that wall. That looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. You can move, mess around with your shadow a little bit more. I think that's pretty nice. Um, all right. So the next part of this, we could take our pick on here. We could put our, we could put the uh, water down in here. So let's open up that file. So I'm going to go back to my folder that has all my images. I'm going to go to the ripples. Now it's a color image. I want this whole thing to be black and white, but I'm going to bring this into Photoshop. Now I'm going to just bring this one straight right into Photoshop because I don't need to really mask it off. I don't need to select it. I want it to be pretty big. So I'm going to bring it down into this area. I want to ripple down here on this part of the floor and kind of looking at a good composition. I don't want it to be perfectly composed where it's like a triangle, perfect triangle. I'm going to have this ripple a little lower down here, kind of in this corner. Don't worry about this overlapping and hit the check mark. Now I'm going to, I don't want this to be the uh, smart object. So I'm going to convert it. So I'm going to go to layer, smart object, rasterize, or I can go rasterize all layers and do that, either one. So again, I don't want to use my eraser here. I want to use a mask so I can then go and re-edit. I mean, we use the eraser on the shadow, that's fine. But on an image like this, I want to use the uh, mask tool. But before we do that, let's convert this to a black and white. So I'm going to go to image, adjustments, and go to black and white. 
There we go, it looks pretty good. Now you do have some kind of adjustments in here. Because it was a color image, you could go in and kind of match the tone a little bit better to this black and white. You can see that it was most, mostly cyan and I can go in here and kind of match that a little bit and get it feeling a little bit better. So I'm gonna click OK, something like that, close enough. I'm gonna hit the mask button, it's all white. That means it's still revealing everything to the left. Now I'm gonna go to my paintbrush tool, switch to your paintbrush, don't be on your eraser here. And then you're gonna go to black and I'm gonna go to my brush. I'm gonna pick a, in my general brushes, I'm gonna pick a soft round, get that size bigger if it was small and maybe even bigger so I can go on my bracket tool on my keyboard. So when I hit the bracket tool, the right bracket tool makes it bigger, the left makes it smaller, you can see that. And I'm just gonna kinda start painting out this side, right? I'm going kind of along the edges. I really want a soft brush because obviously I want it to feel like it's blending into the concrete. Now I don't want it to be perfect round circles, so I'm kind of going in some places a little bit better, a little bit more deeper in some places and in other places I'm going, you know, I'm going harder in this. Like I don't want that other ripple there. Um, so I'm kind of doing this in this area right here. So over here, I want the ripples to be a little bit more back over here. I don't want the ripples and I, I want it to be somewhat uneven, maybe even down here. Eh, I got rid of that right there. Now I don't like that command Z a couple times. So that's pretty good. Just kind of have to go around here and just, I hit it right on the edge. So when I say hit it, I mean, I'm just clicking once sometimes. Let me zoom in. Command plus, I'm right on the edge. Look at this. And I just, see if I just, because it's such a soft round brush, I can, you know, really click and it just does barely any editing there. I could also change the opacity of the brush down a little bit too, and that could even soften it more so you could lower the opacity, but I'm not going to, I'm gonna leave that up at 100% for now. All right, that looks pretty good. Looks pretty, I mean, that's very Jerry Yulesman looking. Okay, so now let's put the hand with the crack on the door, let's do that. Um, so I'm gonna go over to my folder. I'm gonna go to the crack in the wall, start with that first, it's the thing that's behind. And I'm gonna bring that one in. So I'm just gonna bring this whole thing in here. It's big, I'm gonna size it down. It's a smart object to start off with. Again, if, if I wanna convert it, it's not being a smart object. So let me go to command plus, zoom in, see if my size is good. I don't want it to take up the whole door, but I do want it big enough so when the arm is coming out, it feels like it's maybe coming out of something. This isn't gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna click the check mark. You can see it's a smart object, let's convert it. We'll use smart objects later on in other demos. That it, again, I'm just gonna convert it, get, make it so it's not one, so rasterize, smart object, or all layers, doesn't matter. All right. Pretty nice. I want to convert this to black and white. We know how to do that. We go to image adjustments, black and white. Now, when you're doing your surrealist project for me uh, in my class at Los Angeles Mission College, you may not be doing a black and white. You may be doing full color. So I'm doing black and white because that's Jerry Yulesman. Everything he did was in black and white. So for me, I'm having a black and white final image here. But for you, for surrealism uh, project, you're probably gonna have color images. So you won't be converting to black and white probably, but I want you to know how to do it. So here we go, now it's black and white. That looks pretty good, but of course we wanna get rid of this part. So once again, we're gonna use a mask. So I'm gonna click on that. White reveals everything to the left. Guys, if you click on it and it's black right here, let me show you how you switch that. I'm gonna double click it. It's gonna open up the properties panel and right here, and I have my properties panel, right? I have it docked right next to my layers. And right down there, there's invert. So then it's black. So again, how do I do that? I just click on the mask, go to the properties panel. And if you don't see your properties panel open, you can go to window, properties, and that will open up your properties panel. And again, I like to dock it next to layers. I like to, here's the undocked, and here it's docked right next to layers. And that's showing you the color of the mask. Now I'm gonna invert it. Okay, that's white, great. And yep, that's what I want. So I'll go back to my layers. And now I'm gonna go to my paintbrush. Uh, I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna get this brush a little smaller. Uh, hardness, I'll keep the hardness soft there, it's fine. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna start getting rid of, I want that edge of the door. Uh, do I want some of those other cracks in the door? Maybe, I don't know, possibly, maybe not. I haven't decided yet. 
I'm gonna go down here. I definitely want that. I'm gonna zoom in. So I'm painting right. Look, that's already looking pretty blended in there. This doesn't look as real right here because so I'm gonna make my brush a little harder here because this is a little too soft. I'm not getting rid of as much as I want. I'm gonna make the brush smaller. And of course, the more you zoom in, the better. So I'm gonna kind of go up close to this edge here. And this is nice. It's looking, it's looking cool. And I definitely don't want any hard edges. The dead giveaway is if you have hard line edges somewhere like down at the bottom there, I don't want that hard edge. So I'm just gonna kind of softly click there. There we go. That's looking whoop, too much there. I got it into that. That's looking pretty cool. It's kind of going around here, uh, up here. I don't want it to go over that door frame. So you can see I'm kind of making it look like this is, let me get my brush a little bigger, making it look like that crack was in this door. Now the hand is probably gonna overlap this, right? And we have, yes, we see bricks here. The hand is gonna overlap that. And I probably don't need to edit that side really because I think the hand's gonna overlap that. All right, so there's the crack in the door. That's pretty cool. I could stop there, but I want that hand coming out. So now I'm gonna take this. Now the hand, I'm going to do like I did with the person here. So I'm gonna take this hand and I'm gonna drag it to the Photoshop icon and edit it a little bit before I bring it in. I don't want that dude, right? Now this hand doesn't have an arm. Like I, I, I'd like a little bit of an arm to go with it, but whatever. So I'm gonna get kind of a loose selection here. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I don't wanna cut off too much of the hand. I guess I could bring it all in and do the masking, but let me see if I can get a loose selection here. So I'm not gonna use the magnetic lasso tool. I'm just gonna use the lasso tool. So I don't need the whole thing. So let's just start off and just loosely go around. That will solve some of my issue right off the bat. So I can just kind of bring it in. All right, see how I'm loosely going around? Cause I know I'm gonna create a mask in a second. So now here I am, and now this won't be rasterized. This won't be, I mean, excuse me, it won't be a smart object. So I'm gonna view these side by side. So when you do it this way, when you bring it in to Photoshop this way, I'm gonna arrange two up vertical. Uh, I go to my move tool. When I bring it from one open Photoshop document to another, it's not a smart object. When I bring it from my desktop or a folder into Photoshop in an open window, it is a smart object. So here I go. I'm gonna drag that in. All right, now I can close that out. Perfect, I got that there. Now I can kind of size this down. It's pretty big, I don't even see the door, so Command T is gonna let me size, oops. Command T is gonna let me size this down or Control T on a PC. So I'm gonna size this down and then you can decide what direction you want this hand going in. So I'm gonna kinda of like do something like this. So it looks like it's coming out of that the crack in the door a little bit. We're gonna to have to kind of cheat that crack in the door just a tad. I don't know, something like this. Hit the check mark. It is not a smart object. There it is, there's the hand. Now guys, I could name these layers if I want. So if I want to name this, cause it's pretty small. Can't see that very well. So I could name this hand, right? I could name all these if I wanted to. Shadow, shadow, background, whatever. But see how I just clicked in there and named that hand. Now, if you wanna see your layers bigger than, you know, big like mine here, these four little bars up in the top of the layers panel, if I click that and I go down to panel options, you'll see that you can go from like no image to the default I think is this one. So I'm going big, right? I'm going to this big one right here, an, an entire document or just the layer. I like to see the entire document. I like to see where my object is in relationship to the document. So that's why I like the entire document checked right there. Click okay. Okay, so this is bigger, right? Now I'm gonna zoom in and now I'm gonna apply that mask on here. We should know how to do that by this point. So there's a mask. It's white, we got that already. So now I can go around this and now I can fine tune. I can go around and paint this. I can go around and select it again and then put the mask on it. And do, however you wanna do it, right? I think it's a little tedious for me to paint around this. But again, let me just show that. I can go here with black and you know paint around and get that cleaned up. But I'd rather, I think this is pretty good contrast. I'd rather not do it that way. So Command Z, I know I'm kind of doing things twice now. Let me throw that mask away, say delete. Didn't apply it, see? And now I'm gonna think about this a better way. I'm gonna go over here to my uh, magnetic lasso tool and start here somewhere. 
go up. Okay, so there we go. We've got our selection. Now we can create our mask. So if I click here, now I've got the mask. Looks like it cut it all out pretty nicely. There's some spots where, you know, it didn't get it. So, you know, I can go in here, zoom in. And again, if I turn the background, watch this trick. If I want to turn all backgrounds off below this hand, watch this. I just slide down these, slide down. And now I can see it even with the transparent without the white. So now I can go in here and take a look. Okay, so I know I can clean up a couple little items here. So let me go maybe a hard round and close that window out and make my brush small and I'm zoomed way in and I can get right around that finger. Get any little, it's a little detail here. Try to work on that and get it as best as you can for time's sake for this demo. I'm not gonna get it perfect but you get the idea. You can, you know, really get in there and spend some time cleaning this up. This is what's going to separate you from other people using Photoshop. Uh, most people in fo use Photoshop don't know how to use masks, I found. And that's really a shame because I think masks, you've heard me say this before, if you've watched my other tutorials, I think they're the most important part of Photoshop, or if not the most important part, one of the most important parts of Photoshop, especially if you want to make seamless photo montages like we're doing right now. All right, so it's close enough. You know, I could probably even get it better, but you know, we're not gonna see it, especially when I turn on all these. Let me turn them back on. There we go, that's looking pretty cool. Okay, I need a shadow. Well, you know, look, I don't have his wrist here, right? And I could, I guess, fake that. Oh, I can find a better image, I guess, and get that a little bit better. Uh, so that would be nice, but maybe a, a, put a shadow on there. So I'm gonna go down to the effects paddle scroll all the way down to drop shadow. It's going to keep the same shadow direction as the one we put on her. So look at that. It's got that same direction because we're, if, especially if we say use global light, right? Um, so right now if it was unchecked, but negative 42 was, was what I had for her, I think. So we do want that same direction there, but it's too far away from the hand. So I've got to bring it in, right? It's got to come in. And definitely I don't want the shadow going underneath his wrist because it wouldn't exist there. So maybe it's up there and then I would go and separate it from the background. So something like that. Maybe the distance is a little further back. So it looks like it's coming out a little bit more. Maybe the spread is a little less. So it's a little softer, maybe harder. I guess his hand would be closer to the wall than hers. So actually the, the edge of the shadow would be a little sharper. Size could be, I don't want to go like this because that's going to be a dead giveaway. So softer is a little bit better. So something like that I think could work. Now I'm going to click OK. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to separate it from the background. So how do we do that? Held down control right here on the word drop shadow and say create layer. Click OK. We created a layer out of that. Now I can zoom in. And again, I don't use my eraser much, but I can go to my eraser. It's a soft brush and I can er erase. Oops, got to make sure I'm on the right thing here. I was editing the mask, Command Z. I want to click right there on the hand shadow and I can go in and kind of erase that hand shadow up a little bit. And if I want to, again, I could do on this hand, hand shadow, I could do command T and I can even distort this a little bit, right? I could kind of make it come off like that just a tad. So it's feels like it's not exactly right. That's cause that's kind of more how shadows work depending on where the light is, right? Something like that. It's distorting it up maybe a little too much, but pretty cool. All right. Hit the check mark to apply that warp. And there we go, something like that. It's kind of nice. Gives a little more, more drama too with that shadow kind of being warped like that. All right, now Jerry Usman would probably, if he didn't have an arm, you know, this is poor planning on my part. I don't have a wrist here. So if he didn't have a wrist kind of that we could, you know, and I'm not gonna try to fake it and build skin into there on this demo, but you get what I'm doing. But he, he would maybe think about doing some smoke coming out of that hole too, 
Uh, I can move this a little bit so it's not showing as much of the brick, I guess. If I move this, of course, I have to move the shadow a little bit as well. So something like that. So something, something like this. It's kind of cool, right? So I'm just, you know, kind of reference to a shadow. I Look at how I've had the hand. If there was a wrist kind of coming out, it would be inside that crack, right? Something like that. So pretty good. At first glance, you're not going to notice it. Of course, it bugs me. <laughs> but anyway, um, so something like that. Uh, you know, we've got a lot going on in this image. It's pretty cool. I think it's pretty nice. Let's maybe do one last thing and unify this image a little bit more. And by that, I mean, if you look at her, she's much darker than the hand. So I want to lighten her up a little bit. So I'm going to go to her layer there. Not click on the mask, but click on her. See the difference? I'm clicking on her right there, I'm not clicking on the mask. I want to lighten that up. So I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer. Now this is going to be um, a brightness and contrast. And I want to make sure that this is checked right here. Use previous layer to create a clipping mask. I want to make sure that's checked. So that's going to only affect her and not the whole image. If I didn't have this checked, it's going to, this, this brightness and contrast will affect the whole image. So I want to click OK. And now I go back to my layers and check this out. See how that little arrow is pointing down? It, it's saying only affect the layer directly below it. This is great, right? I wish Photoshop would like indent this layer a little bit below so it looks different than these layers here. But trust me when I say that it's just affecting this layer right here. Now to undo that and affect all the layers, I could hold down Option, hold my mouse in between these two, and look at that. See the difference here? Whatever I did in properties now, watch, it's going to affect the whole layer. See that? But when I clip that to it, like I did when I checked that button at the start, if I hold down Option or Alt and hover my mouse right there in between the two layers, look at that. That little arrow is pointing down. And now whatever I do in the properties panel, so it's a little mask on here, by the way. Look at that. This is a mask. Whatever I do in the properties panel, maybe I brighten this up, check that out, brighten that up a little bit. It's only affecting her, not even affecting that shadow. And maybe I lessen the contrast because it was a little too contrasty too. So I take that contrast down a little bit in this image. I'm taking that way down actually, because I'm looking at the hand, I'm looking at the ripples, I'm looking at this, and she was just really contrasted. I don't want to make her too bright because that's going to not look realistic. So somewhere in there, again, the light is going to be key. The angle of the light's important. I think the angle of the light's pretty good on the hand. It looks decently the same as this. Um, okay, so that's good. I think the hand might need a little more contrast. So let's do that same thing for the hand. Now watch, I'm gonna put my mouse right here and so that this layer adjustment goes over the top of the hand. So I'm gonna go to layer. I'm gonna go to new layer adjustment, brightness and contrast. I wanna clip it to the previous layer. And sure enough, there it is. I just wanna show you. It's clipped just to the hand, not to the shadow. And I'm gonna to go to the properties and I want to raise the contrast on this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get more contrasted. So we go up this way and maybe the brightness comes down a little bit. Just to balance this out a little bit. That hand is too bright in the space. Now it's looking a little bit better and that contrast, right? A little bit more contrasted there. Very cool. I'm liking that. It's much, much better. I don't, the ripples look pretty good. I don't, I think that's kind of all right. Now let me do one last, let me command minus zoom out. That's looking pretty nice. Now one thing we could do is do one last kind of pass over this whole thing. I've done that before, which is kind of fun. Uh, you don't have to, you can quit here if you want, but I'll show you one more trick. I'm going to make a new blank transparent layer, right? Out of this little, this little button down here next to the trash can, add a new transparent layer. I'm going to go to my gradient. <clears throat> I'm going to pick the, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to basics, right? I've got that black and white, or I can go to blues. Uh, it's not going to be in color, although that could be kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to, try I have orange uh, oranges and yellows uh, let's let's try purple magenta to purple let's try that let's see what that does now, this is going to look weird at first what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line 
straight down. It's gonna give me a gradient. That's cool. Looks, looks pretty rad. Now I'm gonna do what's called a blend mode. It's a little advanced here, but I'm gonna go right above this layer here where it says normal. All these other layers are normal, but check this out. Now when I go in here, I could add on a layer effect, uh, like say soft light and unify this black and white. I mean, there's some cool effects in here, right? Exclusion and I mean, you can get funky in here, subtract. So I'm not gonna go into detail of what these mean. It feels like they're special effects. They're, they're not really, but um, we'll talk more about these later on in, my, in the semester at Mission College. Uh, if you watch some of my tutorials in the future, uh, we'll talk about blend modes more, but I want a unifying blend mode. So this is gonna knock out some lights. This is gonna knock out some darks, but in here is the 50%. So I'm, I like soft light, and then I'm gonna lower the opacity down. So it's a toned image slightly toned so it's not so look i turn the black and white slightly toned with a little purple tone to it kind of cool right unifies the image a little bit more makes it a little bit more interesting again i could use a different color let's try a different color see what that toning does let's try uh let's go into the reds now let's go oh, that's pretty extreme let's go into the oranges these are pre-made if you don't see these pre-made uh, you should, if you have the latest version of Photoshop, you should see these pre-made uh, folders here with colors. I'm going to go into the oranges and yellows and try that. I could edit it and do my own by double clicking right here, double clicking this and I could edit the gradient, but I'm not going to, we're not going to do that today. So I'm going to draw from top to the bottom or bottom to top, whichever direction I go in, that's the direction it's going to go. That's kind of cool. Uh, this is, you know, yellow to red, let me, or yellow to orange, let me go the other way. Yeah, either way, I kind of, kind of like that a little better. So that's kind of nice. I could raise the opacity up a little bit. So I got a little toning going on there. So it unifies the whole image together, it's possible. So anyways, I think that looks pretty good. You could do it with or without. That looks pretty cool without it as well. So that's it. That's doing a, a Jerry Yulesman style surrealist image. If I was going to export this out then for my, let's say for my demo and you're going to turn it into me at Los Angeles Mission College, you're going to go to file, export, quick export as PNG. And that's a file that you can share, you know, to Instagram or whatever. You can put that up, you know, on your social media, save it to your folder and upload that somewhere and then tag, tag us in it. If you put it on your social media, hey, check out the thing I did in, in Photoshop. Pretty cool Photoshop, uh, you know, demo here to do a Jerry Yulesman style surrealist photo montage. All right, that's been a Curtis Day tutorial. We'll see you guys next time.